Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey listeners, Katie here. And I sincerely hope you cannot hear my husband snoring in the background because... It's horrible. It's terrible. He's in the next room. Anyway, uh, today's episode is an awesome interview about modern quilting with my friend Karina Griffiths, and I think you guys are going to really, really like it. And if you like this episode and you want to see awesome interviews with really cool artists and makers and craftspeople and keep having these great episodes coming at you, we need you to support our show, which is entirely 100% listener supported. So you can do that in a few ways. You can go to our website, twoartsygals.com and make a donation uh, to Two Gals through, um, we use PayPal. You can, there's a button there, click it. If you don't want, if you don't have a PayPal account, I think PayPal now allows you to use credit cards. And if you don't want to use your credit card, you can use a prepaid credit card. Just go get one at like your local supermarket and use that to do a donation. You can set it up to do a one-time donation, or you can set it up to do a small monthly donation. You know what would be awesome? Like five, 10 bucks a month, whatever. Any amount is great. It helps us keep um, our overhead down so we're not paying for a bunch of stuff out of pocket. You can also get us something from our Amazon wish list. We have a bunch of products on there that we would like to try out and, and talk about for you guys. So you can also connect to that wish list through our website. Click the wish list button and you'll see the stuff that we've been looking to get. Even if you don't have any money, there are plenty of ways that you can support the podcast and keep it going. Uh, you can tell your friends about us, tell your family about us, share us on the social medias, talk us up, yo, tell people they should listen to us. And if you're listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or wherever you get your podcast, the Podomatic app, leave us feedback, give us a bunch of stars and tell people how cool we are. Even if you're leaving bad feedback, we're still getting bumped up in the search algorithms when people look for us, the, the, the podcasts that have the most feedback appear at the top of the search results. So you could help us out by doing that. You can also talk about us on social media and share with all your friends that way. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have a Facebook fan page. And if you follow us there, we always post our new links to our new episodes and try to share some funny stuff. And we have announcements. But now we also have a Facebook group for our fans. And we are part of the group and we interact with you regularly. And we just kind of wanted to build a more community based space for us to talk about our projects that we're working on and the cool shit with that we're making and share inspiring and funny things with each other. So we're, it's two artsy gals making cool shit, yo. Check that out. If you request, I will personally approve you and add you to the group. It will be awesome. Um, we're also on Instagram and Twitter. And as you know, we have a Pinterest for this page or for the podcast so that you can look at all, um, all the research and examples that we find for you about the things that we're talking about on the show. We love to hear from you guys. And if you're not in the group, which is a very easy way for us to communicate, um, we can also, you can also email us at twoartsygals at gmail.com. Send us your comments, send us your questions, send us your show ideas. Um, send us love poems telling us how awesome we are whatevs. We always answer our email and we love hearing from you. Um, and you can also call us at 503-395-7190 and leave us a voicemail on our voicemail line and we will play it on the show. But we haven't actually had a call 
in a long time. Somebody call us and leave us a message, yo. We're starting to feel sad about it. Uh, still working on the new merch. Um, and as soon as we have the new merch design, the new design up, we're going to be doing some make some cool shit yo gear. Um, and we are switching from Cafe Press to Redbubble. As soon as that's all ready, we will let you know. And we may even order some sample stuff from them and do some kind of prize drawing or giveaway. So keep your ears tuned in for that. Anyway, enjoy this interview with Karina Griffiths about the modern quilting movement. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. And you're listening to Two Artsy Gals. Yay! <laughs> We're just going to get right started right away today because yeah. I'm super excited because yes. my friend Karina is here Yay! to talk about quilting. We've been threatening to have her on for ever but i finally asked her so karina's Yay! here i'm gonna scoot your and mic up a little bit yeah, yeah griffiths so is that how you sure hear correct you. griffiths yeah karina glad griffiths. to be here and she is an amazing quiltress and i just have to tell you that you have restored my view of quilting because i have known some crazy fucking quilting people and you are not one of those I think it's probably my take on it. Yeah. You're like, you're not <laughs> yeah. like one of the, ins- like, I I know personally and have run into some really not so people. Intense that quilting. Intense. Fucking intense. That's a good word. Yeah. Very intense. And, and it has, it kind of put me off of it a little bit. Also, I understand. I'm kind of a train wreck when it comes to anything that has to do with precision. So too. quilting scares me. But you do amazing work, and you do, it's like, cool shit. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I'm just, like, do cool stuff. So we just kind of, I don't know, we just have conversations. And we swear a lot, so don't worry about swearing, because it's what we fucking do. Fantastic. We sign, <laughs> I mean, our tagline is make some cool shit, yo. So swear away. Um, <clears throat> when did you get into quilting? I actually got into quilting much later in my sewing career. So I started out kind of the normal path of, oh, I want to make some garments and home deck items. And when I finally bought a machine, I had the wherewithal to kind of think, you know, I'm probably going to get into quilting at some point in time. (laughs) So I'm going to buy a machine that has that capability. And so I made sure I bought one that came with a walking foot. And mine also came with, um, because I sew on a Bernina, um, a BSR, which is a regulator, like a stitch regulator for free motion quilting. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I knew I would grow into those functions. And so it took me about two to three years before I actually got bit by the quilting bug. And it was because of moving towards... I was introduced to the modern movement, which I'm part of the Portland Modern Quilt Guild here in town. How cool. Yeah. And having (laughs) the having the opportunity to take a class at Modern Domestic opened my eyes to the free form of quilting, and that is improv quilting. And that blew my mind. I didn't even know that was a thing. (laughs) I love this because when I think of quilting like, my great-grandmother quilted shit. I forgot to get out those quilt squares. I just wanted to show them to you because I thought you'd think they were cool. But my great-grandmother and her sister quilted and their mother quilted. And they did these fussy, like, they did them by hand. And they did, like, the the traditional sunbonnet babies and all that stuff, which is, I mean, they're cool. I have a quilt that my grandma made, my great-grandma made me, but they're not, like, that doesn't sing to me. But yeah. your well, quilts are what, really neat. What is considered modern quilting? Like, what? So that's a big question. Okay, (laughs) (laughs) And I think modern quilting, you could ask probably 10 different people and in my modern quilting guild, and they would probably each give you a different answer. Okay. Um, It it really varies from using more solids in your quilts to involving different techniques in your quilting, in your construction. Um, It could be deconstructing a classic pattern. Um, so or doing the improv work improv tends to be very modern so I think it depends on again it's what quilting speaks what part of quilting speaks to you 
Um, it could be the fabrics you choose. Okay. So the yeah. palettes. Um, again, like their quilting has a history and, you know, it was originally very much handwork mm-hmm. because that's what was they didn't available. Have machines, yeah, mm-hmm. correct. We're modern. We can use some fucking machines. Yeah, and, and <laughs> that's partly. I mean, the modern movement. You do see hand quilting in there, but it's used in a different way than what you would see, you know, hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's learning new techniques is for is how it is for me, and de- yeah. for me, it's also deconstructing blocks, and that really motivates me to try new things yeah um and just have a just open up it's it's not where you know when you follow a a garment pattern you're following step a and step b Mm -hmm. and you're making sure that that sleeve is, is inserted correctly whereas with quilting you have a lot more leeway for creativity um, and so many, in, in every single piece of it, you still follow a process, but I yeah. feel like it's a lot more open. But it's not, I it's see. not laid out yeah. for you. You do it this way and this way. It's you kind of a... You to bring your own interpretation mm-hmm. to it. Absolutely. I, I, that's what I feel. I mean, there's definitely the basics, you know, you're using a quarter inch seam, you know, and there's best practices, mm-hmm. but that best practice, there could be five different best practices depending on who you ask and you'll learn new techniques. And that to me is really exciting is when you talk to other quilters and how they, how they bind a quilt. Mm-hmm. Everyone will bind a quilt a little bit differently. Yeah. And so you learn and maybe that technique helps you kind of figure out your own. Yeah. Your own style. Absolutely. Yeah. And so for quilting for me has been a, an opportunity to expand um, a lot more than garment sewing has, even though garment sewing is infinite as well. Yeah. Um, I feel my mind can relax a little bit when it mm-hmm. comes to quilting. And that's that's what I find really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I almost like the collage-like aspect of it in a way, you know. I don't know, but I I guess that's more applique maybe I'm thinking of. I've always kind of had a thing for Well, you I could, know. I mean, that's the thing is applique, you can get that collage look through applique. You can do it through improv. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can also probably do it through, um, there's multiple types of applique, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so needle turn applique, raw edge applique. So it really depends on what look you're going for and Mm -hmm. um you know i'm just starting to do applique but i i can't even think of doing needle turn applique at this point so so what's the difference between needle turn applique and raw edge applique like what what are the differences in those so i'm not an expert in either one of them um needle turn it's more hand sewing and you are it's it's a way of finishing the edges okay um oh, okay. whereas the raw edge you sometimes are using um like a, a paper uh, for lack of better terms um i can't remember the technical term right now that is that you kind of put down on it almost like a interfacing mm-hmm. okay and so that it doesn't then you spray. sew around yeah um okay. so sew around it mm-hmm. or, or you quilt over it there's times where i don't even um sew around the edges i actually just quilt over the whole thing oh yeah and um, then it becomes part of yeah mm-hmm. i did a um a prince tribute mini quilt and that was oh. a technique that oh my I god used. i would love I to see, see that, that. Yeah, yeah i'll send you guys pictures we're huge stuff. Yeah, I'm fans. doing a prints embroidery right now. Yeah, it was a That's challenge fun. for um, an event that I go to, and the fabrics made me think of prints. Mm-hmm. And so I did a prints tribute mini quilt, and it was really fun. I That's love super that. cool. I yeah. love that. And I got to use, I got to employ different techniques, and that's, again, you know, depending on what you're trying to communicate, you can apl- employ different techniques. And so I tried applique, and because I didn't really feel um, – that you know sewing down all the edges was really applicable for that mini quilt Mm because it's not going to be washed it's not going to be snuggled with Mm -hmm. um i could have those that kind of that paper in there and it could be a little stiff i could just quilt over the the whole thing and it would stay you could use it as a wall hanging maybe it is it's a wall hanging now yeah i gave it away actually to a friend and that's super cool who's a huge prince fan and he actually hangs it in his cube at work it's a big deal that's awesome it is so rad yeah so I know this is kind of going a little bit backwards, but I'm curious, like, how do you join a guild of something? Like, I didn't even know 
that was a thing, but how inspiring that must be. Yeah, how did it's you find um, that. So I I knew about it through I had I have actually have friends that were part of the guild. And um, when I started getting into quilting, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, so heard about the Portland Modern Quilt Guild and I'm curious about coming to a meeting. And she really helped introduce me to the guild. Um, The Portland Modern Quilt Guild is fairly unique. It is a very large guild. Um, We have about 150 members. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, whereas a lot of the other guilds throughout the nation are much smaller. Um, so we have, it shows the strength of the arts community here in Portland. Yeah. Um, yes. And it is, it's, a, it's an amazing resource. Um, everything that the guild provides and the activities they do are just, it's really strong. It's really active. And you learn a lot. And you're very inspired because yes. you have 150 yeah. people making that are stuff. making stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's phenomenal. Yeah. The show and tell is jaw dropping. Do you guys there. ever do like shows like exhibits? Um, you know, I think that's something they're looking into. The um, the members, the board members did a survey this year and they received feedback and people would like to be more involved with shows. We do um, an exhibit as with the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. Oh, okay. So they recently took everyone's That's huge, quilts isn't for it? submissions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's an amazing event if if you've never gone to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. Sisters My as in Cindy and I were talking about Sisters, or, sisters Oregon. Sisters Oregon. Oregon. Okay, yeah. that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Um amazing event he, just it's awesome huge. yeah yeah it looks like there's tons we should of go to that and stuff. record live at yeah the show. oh my gosh that would be, fun. That would be fun yeah I, I i went last year and i was just blown away um it's really cool there's also other events that i think they submit um quilts for and so they're working on really getting our members quilts out there so they can be exhibited yeah um, that's really cool upcoming for i think this next weekend is quilt con which is the big event <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. yes i, I know Sorry, i'm learning all these <laughs> that the modern quilt excited. guild puts on once a year it's in savannah this year and oh, again do you get to go no i'm not going to quilt con this year oh. um it wasn't so in my cool. budget, unfortunately, <laughs> but I know lots of people that are going. I know people that are teaching and it's an, again, another event where you get to see um, some remarkable work. I um, bet. Oh um, my gosh. Super inspiring. I mean, you could spend an entire day just looking at the quilts and yep. um, they, they put a lot of resources into it. There's actually people that ha- wear white gloves so you can get up close and ask to see the backs of quilts <gasps> oh. and see you you can really look at the details. It's phenomenal. Wow. Um, and so QuiltCon is is another you know awesome place to see quilts. And I think our quilt guild um, put a submission in for like our Portland Modern Quilt Guild. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all the guilds kind of submitted quilts as part of a challenge huh. and stuff like that, like a charity type quilt. That's so really so cool. is there like a yeah. national guild that you're Inner, yeah, the, that you're twined under, with, or? yeah, the modern quilt guild is like the national um, piece, and then there's the local quilt guilds that actually hold the meetings. Okay, is is how it works. So the national modern quilt guild, who we all pay our dues to be part of. Okay, that's why I was wondering if mm-hmm. you, you had dues they, that you pay. And... They are the ones that put on the quilt con. Um, and is there like a process to, do you have to apply to be part of the guild or can anyone join? Anyone or? can join. So you can be an individual member um, to the, the national guild. So you just be an individual member mm-hmm. or you can go through your local guild and become a member. So I pay my dues to the Portland Modern Quilt Guild, who then pays a, you know, a, a a, fee, a larger, fee. a larger yeah. fee to um, the Modern Quilt Guild to be part of that guild. So, um, so yeah, I'm in essence part of two organizations, but really yeah. they kind of feed into one large. I think that's really cool, and I kind of want to call back to our first episode of the year about finding your tribe your artsy or tribe yeah. and people that you jive with that you can be creative with, and. I, we didn't mention guilds, but well, my mind just was like, is there a fiber art guild? Yeah, I well, there, I'm sure there is. I just found an embroidery guild that's in Tigered, or no, and a crochet wow. guild because I want to become a master crocheter. Oh, 
Awesome. And yeah, I was looking and there are a lot of guilds. And I feel like if you are at a loss and you don't have any friends that you know that do these things that you want to do. Search like for Google, a guild in your area. Like search for a guild in your area. Yeah. That's a really great way to connect with other people. Um, and it again, it's a special kind of connection when you are doing something creative with another person. Yeah. And I highly recommend people getting involved with a guild it's been great i mean absolutely getting to know people having the resources available that a guild provides Mm -hmm. and maybe the modern quilt guild isn't your jam but there are other quilt guilds Mm -hmm. that meet and would maybe be your niche and and and, so the modern quilt quilt guild is dedicated to a more modern modern style of quilting Mm -hmm. but you would probably there people that are guilds that are more focused toward classical methods or free form mm-hmm. methods than yep. more, tr- more traditional quilting that's methods cool. and stuff. So yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is it's nice because my aunt, she is m- much more of the traditional quilter. Mm-hmm. She would be the one that you'd be like, Oh, that's lovely work, but I'm not inspired by yeah. it. Or I don't feel like this would be something I would make. Mm-hmm. Like something you would want on your bed. Or like, Correct. Yeah. Like, and she's won awards and it's beautiful work, but her type of quilting didn't speak to me. Mm-mm. And if she actually looked at my quilting, she'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you're breaking all the rules. I like your quilting though. And that's, you're looking at your quilts it. made me the Halloween quilt because I've seen it a couple times because Karina, I met Karina through our friend Casey and she is part of my Stitch and Bitch group. So <clears throat> I've got to see you work on your Halloween quilt a few times, and I'm in love with it. Yeah, it's, it's a really super fun cool. One. It's really simple, um, and that can be part of the modern movement. It's very mm-hmm. simple. You're it's very not- clean. It's not real fussy. The lines are clean. The colors are clean. They're real bold. And, of I course, like Halloween, because I, like that. I yeah. love Halloween. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. it kind of made me go, oh, yeah, quilting can be cool, not fussy and not... <laughs> yeah. Not, you know what I mean? Not fussy looking, like mm-hmm. not antique, fussy, weird looking. My yeah. dad's wife is a really accomplished quilter. And she, I think, would probably, what she does would be categorized more in the modern quilting. She does a lot of, uh, she does a lot of free form quilting and she does a lot of like art quilts. She mm-hmm. enters contests and stuff. Well, and there's her. a whole nother section of that are that's art quilters Mm -hmm. that essentially paint pictures with their quilting and then stuff so that's a whole nother section of of quilting would that be part of modern quilting Mm -hmm. or a different thing altogether i think it would probably be different i mean but Mm -hmm. that's my take but at the same time you know you could talk to someone else and they'd be like oh no that's totally modern yeah Yeah. well i think it's modern but i yeah i see what you're saying yeah like I think I, that's the thing is I think the the modern quilt guild, and this has been a pretty hot topic, is what is modern, you know, and how you define it mm-hmm. and, you know, what is it? it and again, it's something that um, some people are very, very passionate about in regards to having more strict guidelines in regards to what's modern. Gotcha. And uh, some people are like, well, it's, it's you know, open to interpretation. Correct. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that, I think, happens with any kind of art movement. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it's the traditionalist kind no, of... No, it's true. Like, it it yeah. is. And in, in the mixed media arts community, there's a lot of... If you get into... I, I try to avoid the politics of that stuff, but there are politics and there are very, like, people, well, that's not mixed media art or that's not... It's, I think with everybody, there's people that really want it to be defined mm-hmm. and the people that are like, meh. Yeah. yeah. It kind of is Close what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. And I feel like, um, you know, like I said, I have a creative outlet that mm-hmm. I don't necessarily get when I do garment sewing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so it provides another way to make and and have a, a re, like really tap into a very different side mm-hmm. of my creative brain. So yeah, I get what you're saying about that too because I like making my own clothes, but I like making my own clothes because I can make my own clothes. Like right. I don't want to yeah. have to go to a store and try to find something that's going to fit me the way that I want it to fit. I don't I don't like typically like I want something unique. Mm-hmm. Like I can buy this pattern and this fabric and do it in this way, but it isn't 
to me, it doesn't feel super creative. I'm right. I'm, I'm making myself some clothes. Yeah. Like I feel like there's definitely ways to be creative in garment sewing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you you add piping or yeah, you can you know, jazz it up make, and put yeah. your own. You definitely have a freedom. Um. And so, and I feel like I have done that in like my fabric choices or how Mm -hmm. I change the design maybe when I'm, I'm doing fitting and so on and so forth, um, or adding like brick rack somewhere or pockets that Mm -hmm. wouldn't normally be on there. Um, but it's really different, um, cause I'm, I'm, you're still having to follow a very strict pattern to to make the garment look the way. Yeah, because if one arm is bigger than the other one, or yeah, or whatever, I don't mm-hmm. know, it wouldn't. And you follow work. patterns within quilting, um, but I feel like you have a lot more leeway if you want to choose to deconstruct that block, or not, or you know, make it ex- you know huge. You know, you can take a classic churn dash block and shrink it, what expand is it. it. What is that? It's a it's a classic block. Um, it's actually not my favorite block, but it was the first one that came to mind. But there's ways to, you know, do the placement different, you know, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. And so just an example of, of taking something that is very traditional, but then twisting it mm-hmm. and how you do. Here's my lack of knowledge about quilting question. What can, what is a block? Like, can it be just a square of fabric or is it a square of fabric that you've done something to or is it multiple fabric? Like... Yeah, so a block, constitutes a block. Yeah, so a block, how I would define it, and again, I'm not probably textbooked on this, but it would be, you know, it's one piece that you put together to create that full quilt. Okay. So if you're familiar with like a half square triangle, that's a really basic yes. block. Yes, mm-hmm. okay. Yes. So you would make, let's say, um, if you're making a mini quilt or something, you make 20 units, 20 half square triangle units and then you would arrange those units to create the design that's within the the quilt um and so the block is that basic unit okay oh so it's just the one single piece of the one square the one one square and then you make multiples okay and there's billions of different ways you can do those Mm -hmm. blocks yep the way you could you can put half square triangles together so many different ways it's a really versatile block and mm-hmm. that's why you know it it's people use them all the time um just so our listeners are clear you're talking about like when you fold a square in half and then cut it in two like diagonally and then cut it in two that's, and then you have two triangles that's one technique of sewing okay. a half square triangle gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or you can put i've seen a lot of quilts well i'm just seeing like yeah. it's, it's a triangle together. that's made from a half a square like you would diagonally separate mm-hmm. the square and yep. then it makes okay yeah gotcha Absolutely. So, um, but that's the thing is, so a block, like a churn dash block, um, there's multiple, you know, the pieces aren't just two, two triangles. You know, you're, you're doing a couple different, you know, you've cut different strips and different lengths and you're assembling that uh, Yes. Okay. to okay. create a block, your first churn dash, and then you add on to it. So it's same thing like with wonky stars or whatnot. Yeah, those are you build your block, which is a star, and so then you would, you know, make other star blocks to put together to create the, the finished quilt. Okay, now I'm thinking I might now the churn dash is maybe like say you have a square and then a strip and then a strip, so they're like maybe like three different rectangle square shapes that come uh, together it's like a it? square that kind of has triangles on each corner ah, okay oh, okay churn gotcha dash. Okay. yeah so but yeah for your listeners they can google churn dash and they can see what a churn dash block okay. is again it's I not guess really I, inspiring I google, to me yeah i can google like quilting blocks and then there's probably a billion there are lots and lots of quilting blocks mm-hmm. yeah and how you put them together is because i've thought about because my grandma when she passed away I found this bag of all these old handkerchiefs and a, and a instructions of how to make a butterfly quilt mm-hmm. which is like how you fold the handkerchiefs and put them on your block or whatever and I always thought maybe I should like do that but I don't know how to quilt so it's like in a bag in my sewing room I'm like maybe someday I'll get around but I think to I it. always felt intimidated because the only way that I ever saw anyone doing quilting as a child or growing up was watching my great grandmother sew quilts by hand, and I was like, "I'm not fucking doing that." Yeah, 
That's crazy, but well, that's how she knew how to do it. That's how she, it because she did it, yeah. She was a million years old. And that's the thing is there's also a movement right now um, called slow sewing and doing, moving to hand sewing, you know, getting, <sighs> getting reclaiming that. Together. Yeah, reclaiming that hand sewing and kind of slowing down and taking that moment to hand piece those blocks, hand quilt instead of using your machine or long arm. Um, so there's definitely that's, and that's within the modern quilt guild, um, Hmm. movement or modern quilting movement is, you know, reclaiming some of the hand sewing and, and applying it to To more modern, 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 um, applications. That just all feels so intimidating to me. I could probably do one of those, those old ones where you just pull the piece of yarn through and like. Are you know that? Oh yeah, no, oh, I yeah, had a million know of those. It's like barely time. quilting. Yeah, yeah it's time. Like barely, barely quilting. Yeah, I had one of those with that. Raggedy Ann and Andy fabric on it, and I loved it so much. And it is. But that's like, the thing is, yeah. you get to like mm-hmm. if that's what's speaking to you or what's speaking to the fabric. Like I don't do the same thing every time. Like yeah. I don't do the same quilting on a project. You know, I definitely am. I gravitate towards certain things. Like I really love straight lines. They feel mm-hmm. good. I'm not into feathers, um, you know, and I feel really comfortable doing straight line quilting. Is it very creative? No, but that's what I feel really comfortable with. And mm-hmm. if your quilt speaks to having it just tied. Yeah, I don't think that it's not yeah. creative. Yeah, there's just, just, it's just no, I think it's creative awesome in a different way. Yeah, pouch. That's, that's beautiful. Really and I, cool. I've seen some of your quilts and they're, I would call them very creative. Yeah, but I, I'm, you know, I'm using patterns and, you know, adding my takes to those mm-hmm. patterns. And there's a couple that I've, you know, designed myself and stuff like that. And But they've come out of, like, using a half square triangle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing is, there's certain things that you gravitate to. I know, for me, I I really like the look of a half square triangle. I love the, what you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff you can do. You can make, like, a geometric do. looking. You can do all kinds of really fun stuff. Whereas yeah. I have a friend that her thing is sewing curves. She does quarter circles like there is oh, no tomorrow that's hard. and wow. the designs that she creates with with quilting design software and what she does absolutely amazing and beautiful but that's what speaks to her is those quarter circles and she really wants to teach people how to do that not have that mm-hmm. fear and um yeah cuz i can see where cur- sewing curves in that setting would be very intimidating it can be cuz you need it to be flat like you're making a quill that's got to be flat. Mm-hmm. That, and there's techniques that's to make it. Stressing where... my brain out a lot right now, <laughs> yeah. thinking of how you would do that. I'm going, oh my god, yeah, that's a lot of pressure. It, but that's that's <laughs> the challenge, and for me, that's fun. That's why I like quilting. It's it's um, it's a challenge to solve that problem, and I'm still you know getting to do that with quilting, which is originally why I wanted to get into garment sewing was. I love solving problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a creative problem. And so you learn that technique to solve that problem and make it. And make like, it okay, what's my next particular. problem now? I can solve. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. So that's the thing is everyone, <laughs> something speaks to everyone. And, you know, it's really fun because it took me a long time to get into um, English paper piecing. Like I was just like, I am what not going to get into. What is English paper piecing? <laughs> English paper piecing is where you have templates, like paper templates. Ah. And you either um, hand sew, you tack um, the fabric down, or you use like a glue stick, depending on your application of Were how you, you're using it. Did you do the Christmas tree thing? Is that? Yep. That's Those right. Those hexagons yes. were. That was super fucking Yeah. Cute. So I was yeah. hand basting those, mm-hmm. um, those pieces. And then you either can applique them down, um, like sew them down, like around the edges or quilt over them, um, or depending if you um, the application, you can sew the pieces together to create a larger mm-hmm. quilt piece. So I've done both. So you leave the paper inside of them. Um, when you are sewing them together. Like you take one piece and add it to the next piece. Like if you were joining blocks together, mm-hmm. but you're doing it by hand. Yes, you keep the papers in. If you are applicating them down, you would remove the papers okay. and stuff. But in the end, you always remove the papers. It just depends on what order you remove mm-hmm. the papers. But again, I never thought I would be into English paper piecing. I thought it was crazy. <laughs> because I thought it was like, if you can't do it by machine, I don't want anything to do with yeah. it. And then I was like, whoa. 
this technique is actually really cool and there's so many things that you can do with it and because you're using these shapes that may not be really easy to machine sew like you have to learn like a y seam and y seams i've never tried to learn because they scare me Mm -hmm. but i can do it by hand i can do it with an english paper piece and so i feel like i have that is where my comfort zone is so i feel like quilting also gives you a lot of options to find your comfort zone and and yeah. so you know to make you sew your project into whatever you're you're looking to do so it, it's you know just like with any kind of creative you know outlet you kind of have unlimited amounts to yeah learn you're your only and, limit mm-hmm. i know you mentioned in the stitch and bitch that doing being in the stitch and bitch group has kind of made you get more into hand sewing mm-hmm. some things it really that has you didn't before it really so. has it's it's helped pull me out from behind my machine because i i am again like i believe if you can't do it by your machine why do it yeah um, I, <laughs> I am very much married to my machine so having having the group the stitch and bitch group where i am forced to do hand sewing because i don't i don't set up my machine i don't bring that over um, you know, it's, it's forcing me to learn how to hand bind my quilts better, mm-hmm. um, and sit and, and take that moment to do that. It's, it's kind of allowed me that opportunity to really feel like I have that space to learn how to do English paper piecing. Um, I'm realizing it's versatility of actually learning some hand sewing techniques. Yeah. Cause you can, you, you can't always bring your machine with you. Yeah. Yeah. And it it limits you. And I don't, and since I'm not a knitter, I'm not a crocheter, I need to have options in regards to to bringing projects with me. So um, it has, it really has. Having the Stitch and Bitch has been really great for making me look into these different techniques. And that's cool. I always look forward to seeing what you're doing. It's fun. Like if your power goes out, you can. Yeah, still you can still work on something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know let's, we... let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah. The last time we lost power, I was like, well, now what am I going to do? I know. It's like, oh. Yeah, last you realize like how tied you are to your electronics. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. the thing is, it's like, especially with sewing, any type of sewing, you, you need your iron because mm-hmm. yes. you're pressing. Yes. Yes. That's you know, true. and it's like especially you can get quilting. Oh, yeah. 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 So you really have to like you can get to a certain point if you hand sew, but then you're like, ah, I need to press. You know, mm-hmm. I need to have that option. Someone was, I can't remember who it was, was asking me the other day that they were complaining that they were never able to get something to work when they were sewing. And I'm like, well, do you press your seams? And they're like, no, why would I do that? And I'm like, <laughs> because why wouldn't you, you? Yeah. <laughs> like try it? Trust me. And they're like, oh, gotcha. After they did it. Cause... Yeah. But that's the thing is that like, it's a lot of people aren't. I mean, I hate to use the word formal training, but a lot of people aren't formally trained. Mm-hmm. Um, it really depends on where you learn your 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 quilting or your techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people have had that gift of having the knowledge passed down from a grandmother or a mother um, or a family member. Um, we're really lucky here in Portland to have so many classes available where you can get hands on i feel like we are too we have Um, there's a class for everything here and we have we have a lot of support here whereas a lot of people they are having to do it through books or youtube or Mm -hmm. just kind of like well i'm gonna try this and just doing it just winging it just winging it and you know that's what i do most of the time (laughs) i'm like i'm gonna give this a try yeah i mean it works or it doesn't yeah and we're really lucky i mean honestly having youtube is awesome having blogs like blogs are amazing i look at constantly when i'm looking at learning a technique um i research it Mm -hmm. and having access to blogs is Uh so awesome blogs and youtube is a big deal for me because i you can see i'm really not the kind of person that can read something and get it i have to see it happening and do it along with to really understand yeah you can hit pause and wait wait a minute a little bit yeah Yeah, i know i love it that's how i learn new crochet stitches 
Yeah. If I, because I can't read that shit. I'm like, I read it and it's, I mean, now, like, I'm accomplished enough at crocheting now that most of the time I can figure it out just reading it. But every once in a while, still there's something where I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this person's talking about. And I have to go learn a new stitch. And I always defer to YouTube for that shit. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, if you start building that community, Mm -hmm. you have people you can reach out and ask those questions. Exactly. And that's what your guild does. That's what your shops do. And Mm -hmm. we have a lot of shops here. Oh my gosh. We have so many shops for so many. Yeah. And so you can ask, you know, your groups or you can go into those shops and you get that help. I mean, there's so many times where I've walked into Modern Domestic and asked for help on so many different things. And they're like, oh, well, you do X, Y, and Z. Or have you thought about using this item? And I'm like, oh, my God, that would totally make my life easier. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just knowing your tools. There's a lot yes. of tools. And that makes yeah, that is a, big, a huge, difference. huge difference. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's the thing. It's like understanding that your machine has a quarter inch foot, you know, mm-hmm. and using that compared to your normal presser foot. Yeah, because a normal presser foot is so wide. I feel like that that would take up the quarter inch on the side almost yeah. when you're. But that's the thing. It's sewing. like it's also learning a little bit more about your machine and what it mm-hmm. does. And um, so it, there's definitely a learning curve with quilting. Like I've definitely made a lot of mistakes. I still make tons of mistakes. Mm-hmm. But each time that's I, how you learn, though. Yeah, each time I do a quilt, like I definitely know every single mistake that's in there. Um, but that is what washing your quilts and having them become crinkly takes away. Yeah, all the issues oh, kind yeah. of fade. Like you don't <laughs> you don't notice that your points don't match up. No. You don't notice See, this those missed stitches. <laughs> this is yeah. why I've tried quilting just because I wanted to. I wanted to know how to do it in the past. This was pre looking shit up on the internet days though i was in my early 20s we didn't have the interwebs and it didn't fucking matter what i did i could not get my corners to match up perfectly and i kind of have this little ocd it is my obsessive compulsive tendencies that make me so angry and if i can't do it i just get so hung up on it and i would just be like no i'm not doing it but i didn't have access to knowledge tools um i didn't have a full understanding of how i was a i mean i i had done garment sewing for years but i had never sewn a quilt so i didn't really understand using my machine in that aspect so now i feel like there's so many more and and in portland you have so many people that can help you with that yeah yeah and that's the thing is like that's why i always encourage people to like meet people and, mm-hmm. and like ask questions and um, if you can go to a class, you know, yeah. I've, I have the community that has come out of me going to modern domestic and taking classes. These they're, they're my friends. Like I've met some really amazing people. Um, and I feel so welcomed going in there and that's you know, great. As, yeah. It's really, and there's the shops are supportive, you know, yeah. and they're there to, you know, obviously help you. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have really, really just amazing support. Here. I've noticed that here we have a lot of like, we have a lot of smaller, small business shops for stuff like that. Yeah. And there's a definitely a different feeling than like, I don't feel like I can go into Joann's and ask questions. You're, you're right. Because people there very, very. They're like, I just do this thing. Yeah. I don't they're know like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or they're just so fucking understaffed and busy Mm -hmm. they really don't have time to talk to you like that so i've noticed when i worked at the million store it was a a huge difference Mm -hmm. between shopping at joann's because Mm -hmm. i feel like and the million store is pretty huge but i feel like it's also the employees there they put people in the departments that they with the things that they excel at and the things that they're interested in and when you go to yeah. yarn stores, like smaller yarn stores, I go up here to Northwest Wolves in the village sometimes. If I have a, something that is causing me problems, I've walked in there and said, what the fuck is even happening to this? And they're like, oh, and they'll just fix it for you. They're like, no, no, this is what you do. And it's the same with modern domestic with sewing. Yeah. I feel bad for people that don't have that in their communities. Plus the thing is Fabric Depot is enormous. Yes. But when you go there... Um, 
I find that if I ask questions, they will either, you know, they will either be able to answer that or they will find someone. Someone in the store in the who store knows. Yeah. Who knows and can answer the question. Yeah, that's and really nice about that. Yeah. And they're catering to an incredibly wide you know, market. Yeah. You know, it's not just quilters that they cater to. Mm-hmm. They have a ton of garment fabric. They have a well, They were really helpful. Have... I made my wedding dress mm-hmm. and all my bridesmaids dresses and... They were so awesome when I walked in there and I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I'm super overwhelmed. They were like, okay, this is what we do. And they had a lady who specialized in that shit. And they're like, you need to go talk to this lady. She'll help you figure it all out. And yeah. I wouldn't have been able to get my stuff done without going completely fucking bonkers yep. without their guidance to be like, <laughs> all right, great. take a breath. Yeah. You're all right. This is what we do. <laughs> Yeah. So cool. But the thing is, at the same time, you know, even if you don't have that kind of support locally, um, reaching out to the internet community, oh like my Instagram, God. it's is amazing. Huge. I, you know, there's so many people that I follow for inspiration that do tutorials. That's, um, I think the quilting community, the sewing community still really keeps up on blogs. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of blogging that still happens. So mm-hmm. you can get information there. Um, but you're also able to connect with people and ask questions. And I think that's so if you don't have the local resources, there are ways to connect still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like, it's huge right now to have yeah. that that opportunity to be like, oh, okay, like I live in somewhere super small. Mm-hmm. I have to drive two hours to get to a, a fabric store. But my goodness, I can go online and I have an incredible amount of A, information and B, fabrics that I can mm-hmm. order that ha- and have them delivered in <sighs> like three days. Yeah, I, it but it's beautiful. There's so much cool stuff out there. There is. And uh, I really can't recommend enough i mean i know right now facebook is a little bit overwhelming for people and you know just because nobody shuts up about politics ever but i (laughs) there's so many cool groups though getting into groups groups on facebook through often through blogs that you follow or people on instagram yeah or you buy a pattern and it has they they you can go have to this facebook group and then you have this community of people like Lonnie and I, so we use patterns for pirates a lot when we are doing knit clothing. They have a group. You can go in there and say, I'm having trouble with this pattern for this reason. And you have a hundred people answer you in a half an hour. And they're all really nice and really supportive. And they're like, this, like when I posted pictures of my outfit. Just tons of pictures of what people have made. And they're showing, hey, I did this with this. And in that group, they do a lot of hacks with the patterns. Like they combine Patterns and Which stuff. Which is awesome because it, it gives you more inspiration. It yeah. gives you ideas. I, I forgot like, about oh, groups. I yeah. Because I tend yeah. to not join. It's funny. I don't use Facebook for groups when it comes to sewing. Mm-hmm. I use it for my other hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great because I get to focus. It's funny. I think I've kind of segregated. I use <laughs> Facebook for motorcycles and scooters. Yeah. <laughs> and I use Instagram for my creative outlet for sewing. That's great. Um, That's funny. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, there are like the groups really narrow down your focus and they're, they are supportive. Mm-hmm. And if you do want to. Oh my gosh. And most groups politics, have rules that are like, Hey, don't be a jerk. jumping asshole. You're going to yeah. be out of this group. Absolutely. So they, have administrators. And they, they do have mm-hmm. people policing it. And I've actually been toying with the notion of taking the Facebook app off of my phone and using their groups app so that I just deal with group stuff on my phone and then I can do the rest of Facebook on my computer That's funny. once I had a day. no idea. You just taught me something. I didn't know there was a just a yeah. group You know app. what? I didn't either the other day, but I was like, look, they have a messenger app. I had, They have a pages app because I, I have a couple of different pages for like for this podcast and then for my art page and I run one for my husband's barbershop. So I have that app so I can do that, just that for my phone. But I thought they have to have a groups app. And I looked, and sure enough, they have a groups app. That's awesome. So I'm gonna experiment with it and see see how, because I I don't like how much time I spend on Facebook on my phone. I know I do too, and it's a lot of you get sucked in. There's a lot of crap in yeah. between the. I mean, I love it, and there stuff. are people that I would never. I, there are people that I wouldn't know without yeah. Facebook, yeah. and I there are definitely people that I. I want to check in with that I care about and I love and they're my friends. But 
it's your go-to when you're waiting on the bus or when you're sitting waiting for your doctor's appointment or, you know, I even catch myself doing it sometimes when we're having dinner and we have, we, we've kind of slacked on our no phone dinner rule at home because I don't have a teenager at home anymore. Like I have a 21 year old that's (laughs) never here, but then I'm like, Oh my God, I'm being a total fucking jerk right now. And I need to put my phone down. And I think getting the app itself off of my phone would be a good thing for me. But yeah, Yeah. the groups app. We should do that. Yeah. (laughs) Good, good. I'm glad I I I need need to decide to try quilting. I could probably find a quilting group. Yeah, you could find a quilting group. I'm sure there are millions of quilting groups on there. I feel like I need to. Oh, I use the shit out of Instagram for that stuff. Dude, you do. I mean, I a little bit, but I'm just like, I haven't. It's who you follow, though. You have to find you. You have to find cool people to follow. Yeah. Yes. Because otherwise, it's just looking at the same shit that your friends posted on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, so. that's what I. That's where I'm mm-hmm. at right now. I'm like, oh, this again? No, yeah. I'm just. Yeah, kidding. and I would start with like if there's bloggers that you really like, start there. Follow mm-hmm. them on Instagram, mm-hmm. and then um, that's true. you can kind of see who follows them or who yeah. they follow. That's what I do. And then you can kind of look, and sometimes they'll repost things, you know. So, I've I've been exposed to so many people that I would never know about. Um, based on, you know, just kind of like, oh, they mentioned someone in a comment, so I'm going to go check out their work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you start small, and then you kind of start building up more and more people, you know, that you, you want. Or sometimes if you're looking at hashtags, like you really want like a certain... Yeah. Like you Instagram do a is project. what finally made me get the hashtag thing. Yeah. Because for years I was like, what the fuck does this... What? What is this? It's cool. And no, it's, it's cool as shit. Is, yeah. yeah. It is especially cool on, I like using it on Instagram because if you just hit that hashtag, then it's like this feast for your eyeballs all over the place. Yeah. Which is nice because it can narrow down what your focus is. And I use that when I'm looking at a specific pattern and I want to see how everyone's interpreted it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I look for I design ideas there. And so... So they'll hashtag it with that pattern name or mm-hmm. whatever. And you can just... That's really yeah. cool. That's yeah. And so you can really look at just that pattern instead of looking at 20 other things. And Yeah. So, yeah. I Because I, I, my there's... brain, too, would be like, oh, but there's that. Maybe I should try... It. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I was going to do this thing. Like... <laughs> And Instagram is like a marketplace. Oh, it is. <laughs> I buy so much fabric through Instagram. It's insane. Wow. So you can, okay, because I bought fabric through Facebook, but not, okay. Yeah. So hashtag that. the great fabric to stash. <gasps> yeah. Love. See, we Able belong posts. to a few de stash groups on Facebook yeah. that get de-stashing me. Destashing is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's great. And yeah. you are like minded yeah. community. So my, I feel not like you de-stash? have to watch out for a couple of the groups that we belong to. People are like, Selling it for some ridiculous prices. Well, and I'm it depends like, on the oh, item. I, just, I well, know how much mushroom cool fabric thing I bought. I'm like, oh, I paid a little Yeah, but I saw a lady though. marking some Joanne shit up. And I'm like, oh, uh, you're, you suck. Yeah. I just saw that at Joanne's the other day for like $7.99 a yard. Yeah. Suck yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That happens with really rare fabrics. People mm-hmm. will jack the price up. And because they know you can't go out and buy it yeah it's highly desired like, and there's certain designers that mm-hmm. you know people really really want and it's interesting to see like <laughs> a fat quarter will go for 15 20 dollars mm-hmm. oh depending God. yeah, yeah. No, that's a fat crazy quarter. so yeah. it's kind of like do you want to spend that money and i definitely there is a certain fabric line that i kick myself for not purchasing when i first saw it and so I have slowly been building up my Your stash. my stash of that fabric through Instagram, and everyone knows that I'm looking for it, so they tag me in posts when it, it comes up for oh, sale. Nice. <laughs> and I have great. paid a premium for it. It will be probably the You're most like, expen- oh, expensive quilt I that. ever make, but it will be like... The it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be fabulous. And I'm looking forward to it because like the fabric has already spoken to me. And so I know what kind of block I'm going to use. I'm going to mm-hmm. use curve piecing on it and do the quarter circle. Oh. And... So what is this fabric? Is it a, what is it? Is it printed? Is it's it a it... printed fabric. Um, and it's a line called Dream On. It, it's reminiscent of like vintage bed sheets. Oh, cool. Uh, and normally... Every time I see something real vintage I, I always think of you. Yeah, I'm normally not into pastels, but it's mm-hmm. really kind of soft colors. But I love, this is my thing, is I actually really love florals. 
Oh, wow. Been- it's really weird, but I <laughs> I just think it's, it has to be the right floral. Do you like, like little dainty floral prints I love little or great dainties, big? And I love you big love ones. Okay. Like I kind of really I dig like the funky florals. 60s florals. I don't know. The mm-hmm. Yeah. Weird. So it's my little kind of in the closet like thing. I really enjoy florals. <laughs> you would never guess by looking at me. I don't wear florals. I don't have florals in my house. I'm trying to think if I see. I've never But seen. I love floral fabric for making quilts. Yeah. And so this Dream oh, On yeah. fabric was kind of designed in reminiscence of these these floral vintage, you know, 60s bed sheets. Oh, and cute. Um, okay. It was a very limited run. Um, so, so it's I, really hard to find. Really hard to find. It was one of those ones like I wish I'd purchased it when I saw it, mm-hmm. but I didn't. And um, now that it's out of print. Of yeah, course. It, it demands a high high price. So I've been looking for this vintage print from when when I was a little girl. My grandma made me this house coat that was little mi- mouse ballerinas. There were little mice with tutus and little brown <laughs> mice with pink tutus and little ballet ballet slippers. I loved that fucking house coat like you would not believe. And I have found a few pieces of it, but they're not big enough to make anything for myself. Yeah. And also, I would feel really, I just don't know that I could spend that amount of money on, I'm just waiting for someone to fucking reprint it. Please, somebody well, the thing reprint is, it's like, if it's it. a small piece, buy it and make a pouch. Yeah. See? A pouch. I could yes. buy it and make a pouch. Yeah. Well, I'm fucking doing that. And that's the thing is, like, there's other fabrics that I'm collecting you know, based on certain quilts and stuff, and they're really hard to find. I do pay a premium for them if I ever find them. And there will be times where it takes years before I ever see it being sold on the mm-hmm. fabric to, to stash. Wow. Um, there's, a, there's a scooter fabric, the Christmas oh. scooter fabric. It's these 60 girls and a Santa Claus riding scooters Cute. that I try and hoard and collect. It's very, very hard to find. Um and when I do, I buy it because I'm making this epic Christmas quilt that will probably take me 10 years to make. That's so <laughs> That's exciting, so though. Cool. I think it's so I cool, though, that you have, like you can just love it. put it away and you have your little project planned. And do you go back and forth between quilts that you're working on a lot? I do. Or do you tend to work on one for... Um, I am very Project ADD. Oh, I do that so too. So we get I, that around here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I will start a project. Yes. I will get to a point and I will become super disenchanted with it. Mm-hmm. Or I will be like, oh my gosh, there's something new. i totally yes. I'm inspired by this fabric or this yes. pattern. And so then I'll go off and make a bag yep. instead of like working on this quilt. Mm-hmm. So um, I am known um in my group to be a a social sewer so i'm a huge like i i sew because it's fun i don't Mm -hmm. do it for production i don't do it to make money so i'm really slow like i love the community like Mm -hmm. number one i love the sewing community i love the social aspect about it um because oddly enough sewing is one of my extrovert outlets is the getting together and sewing in a group um which means I'm very slow at projects because I don't. Because you're visiting. I'm visiting. While you're... And so I will pick up projects. I'll work on them for a while and then I'll put them away. Um, I try and make at least one block a year on my Christmas quilt. That's my goal. One block, which <laughs> this so is funny. a huge quilt. It's going to But again, this is the one that you're, That's so that you're fun. collecting the fabric you're collecting for, the right? Fabric. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. So you're like, oh, I got a piece. Okay, I can make another... But yeah, I've actually block. dedicated um, the last last year and this year to finishing up my UFOs. Um, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, and finishing up everything um, that I have just been lying around because I actually um, don't ever finish my quilts. Another oh. dirty little secret. Yeah. <laughs> that's my knitting. That's why I don't knit that much because I, I don't, don't finish my knitting finish projects. Them. I ever. will get them all the way to the to like almost finished and I'll just discard them like they'll just sit they'll sit in a pile in my sewing room so I'm really pushing myself to whatever various stages my quilt projects are in my um really getting them done and it's gonna feel so good it's huge it's yeah great yeah I had 10 projects last year that I put down um because our guild again this is the great thing about being part of a guild um I was queen of the UFOs and that's unfinished objects 
Um, okay, I was so it was if it was like a quilt. I was no. picturing a UFO really cute themed. quilt with aliens on yeah, it. That's what I was but it was it was a contest to help motivate people to finish their projects, mm-hmm. and you would get it was like a raffle. It was a fifty fifty raffle, and um, so people you know were motivated. They bought in, and then they were motivated to try and finish because they got a raffle ticket for each finish. And that to me, I had ten on my project list. I got five almost completed last wow. year. Nice. Oh, that's so sitting down and that's doing so cool. that. What a great idea to get people like, okay, I'll work. Yeah. Well, that and I just need more room in my sewing room. I'm like, kinda, yeah, you're right. I'm starting room. to drown in she projects. She has a super fucking cute sewing room, though. I have oh, to tell you, it's yeah. this nice sunny yellow. She's got all kinds of oh, stuff in there. Cute. Yeah, I'm very lucky to have a dedicated sewing room. That's so rad. Yeah. So it seems like from the gist of what I hear from quilters that the binding can be a pain in the butt. It depends. Okay. Um, some quilters love the binding. Okay, okay. Um, I am oddly enough one of the people that hates hand binding. Okay, is that why things go Tend unfinished? To sit. Yep. You get to that I get point to the... and you're like, God, I fucking hate you this can, part. Yeah, you can machine bind. I don't really... I also don't like machine binding. I don't like the way it looks. So, it doesn't look as nice. Yeah. So I've had this fight because I haven't liked hand sewing and I wasn't very good um, at hand sewing. I have to tell you, though, she says that. but And I don't know if it's just that she's been practicing because of the group, but her hand sewing is fucking phenomenal to look at yeah it's beautiful i work like you don't really see a thread you see nothing it is just wow the, the what you're doing because she's hand binding the halloween quilt the last thing that okay. i saw you working on okay. it's stunning i'm oh. like i don't even see your stitches you're like a magician over there in the corner yeah so <laughs> that's the thing is like you know once i finally sat down and learned i went to my guild and mm-hmm. i talked to the group of girls and they and showed me they showed me how to do it. They showed me the, some of their techniques. And even like when I was at our guild meeting last Thursday, I was sitting next to a friend and we were both binding quilts. We always sat through the meeting. She's like, you know, try this technique. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about doing that. But she also was able to teach me something that I never thought of doing to speed up my my binding. Yeah, I'm really nice. slow with and it. And that probably makes it less daunting. I imagine you'd be like, okay, binding maybe isn't that bad. Yeah, I I'm actually finish these things again. Oh. It's once you start learning the technique, it definitely helps. Yeah, um, and again, like having the support of the stitch and bitch, <laughs> yeah, and having a, an outlet to hand sew, and having the community to help help me kind of figure out some of these things because mm-hmm. I I I've only received some you know instruction, but I'm always having to reach out to learn new techniques. Yeah. Like one of the things I need to learn on these quilts that I. And need to bind uh, is how to bury threads. Um, oh, at the end? At the bury threads. So when you're quilting, sometimes you have to start and stop because either your thread breaks oh, or yeah, yeah. You run, oh, yeah. your bobbin runs out. Or that pisses you, me off when my bobbin runs out. But you go from one, out. like you're, you're, you're filling in one area with a, with a certain design and then you want to go to a different area and do a totally different design. Okay, yeah. So yeah. you'll start and stop. And so you want to bury those threads, those tail ends. Yeah, yeah you don't want to just tie a knot and have a tail Correct. hanging off your shit. Yeah, yeah. so um, learning how to bury threads. So that's right now, that's my challenge is learning how to bury threads. It's very daunting to me. It's it's very simple technique. I know the mechanics of it. Um, do you do it by hand? You use like a, you know, the self-threading needles. Mm-hmm. And you, you use one of those self-threading needles to help get it through. Because you want it just underneath your yeah your fabric once it's underneath then it's yeah yeah so and i'm it, it's yeah so it's kind of for i don't know for some reason i think it's partly because i i learned by watching and doing yes um that's why it's i haven't really tackled mm-hmm. it i'm kind of like i don't know <laughs> we'll see yeah. how this goes so i've been doing all the steps except for burying my threads on finishing these these ufos so. that reminds me of weaving ends for like crochet yeah. I fucking hated doing it. Like, it took me forever to figure out how to do it that would you so wouldn't be able show. to see it. Yeah. And that it would stay together nicely because, mm-hmm. like, when you're changing colors or when you run out. Or the other day, I was working on something that pissed me off. My In the middle of my skein of yarn, it was tied together. I'm like, what? Fucking A. And it totally threw off. The color, because I was trying to learn the planned color pooling thing. Yeah. And it totally threw off my pattern. 
And I had to do it. So then. So like it was cut and someone. Yeah. Tied it. It, they just tied it together in the middle of the skein. So like they must have run in the factory. Mm-hmm. Like it must have broken or they ran out of <laughs> oh one God, and joined it to the other. That, and I was though. like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was. I was so mad. Yeah. But yeah. That's crazy. It took me a long time to learn. I was. I, I had never seen anyone do it. Like you're saying, yeah. like I'd never sat down with someone and watched them the weave the ends. And so my hats, usually those worked their way out after they'd been washed or worn a couple times. Yeah. Or I had one hat that kind of just started coming apart because they worked their way apart in the middle of the hat where I changed colors. And now it's taken me years, but I, I finally just sat down with someone who crochets and had them teach me how to do it. And it's kind of magical. Once it is. You, like you have yeah. that light bulb on. I was like, yeah. oh, it's magical. Yes. That's how it was for hand binding. Like mm-hmm. once I learned the techniques, I was like, oh, okay. Like, now I get it. Yeah. And part of it was also using the right needle. Mm-hmm. I was using, like when I first started trying, I was using way too thick of a needle. So I, oh, I could yeah, barely you get want it a through. light one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's learning about, you know, the different again, it's that those different tools. Mm-hmm. What tools do you use to get that job done? And um, you know, having like the correct needle, having also like the ergonomics because can't you get? I mean, I get sore from embroidery because I'm probably not doing it ergonomically correct or whatever. Like I imagine. Oh yeah, learning will, a correct technique. Yeah, would like make it easier on your hands. And how and... To, yeah, yeah. And I, well, I think that also can be. That changes per the person. I know some people bind with the quilt away from them and other people bind with the quilt on top of them. I think it really depends. Like, that's the thing is, like, there's no one way to right. do it. You have to find your it, your way. Like, I definitely have to go. Um, I go from right to left is how I bind. And I've had people be like, really? I go from left to right. Mm. And so there's... Everyone kind of has a different That's interesting way. To me, right? I'm just trying, puzzling yeah. that out in my head because I think actually right to left kind of feels like it would be it would it would be pretty smooth, like flow sm- smoother than it left works to right. for me. I think in regards to like um, how it, how I how I move with hand mm-hmm. quilting. But again, it really depends on, you know, which way you're going and how you have that quilt orientated. And and if you're left-handed, maybe going from, I was going to say, is it a right-handed, left-handed thing too? It might be maybe? going left to right and stuff. Because so. I've watched left-handed crocheters. My, my brain doesn't like looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird because they have to do it differently than, yeah. like, it looks weird. I'm like, what are you, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> it's all wrong. Yeah. But. It it does it is strange, but well, we're up on an hour, so wow. we're gonna have to. I know that went fast. That did. Um, I want to ask you before we before we stop. What is your favorite quilt that you've ever made? Um, the favorite quilt I ever made was one I made for a now ex boyfriend's sister. She had a baby, and it was a collaborative effort. Um, I, you know, asked some questions in regards to. What, what kind of, what was the baby's room? You know, they knew it was a girl. Um, and so I picked out some fabrics that were representative of kind of their family. So Aww. their grandfather was a really big bowler and I found some, Cute. and they were doing elephants. And so I actually found a fabric from Cotton and Steel, which is a designer collective um, that had little elephants and bowling pins on it. <laughs> And, Holy and a, shit! In a, in a pink, in a pink, um, and we, um, I made half square triangles out of I think it was three different colors of fabric. I put them together different ways, and um, my now ex, um, he actually designed the quilt. I made all the half square triangle blocks, and I told him, put these up on my design wall. You make the quilt pattern, and so he took all those blocks. He designed the quilt for. His niece, and then oh, I did, I did so all cool. the work putting it together, um, and so I let him know. I put him in the process. It, it was backed. Um, the backing was a lawn, so it was very soft, mm. and um, he was definitely part of the process. And so it was. It's it's a really special quilt because I love collaboration, and yeah. he helped make it for his niece, and um, so that one's probably one of the most special 
Secondly, being the Prince Tribute mini quilt. Yeah. Yes. The, That's yeah. great. Wow, so. And I think Karina said she would send us some pictures of her quilts that we're going to put up on the blog. Cool. I so y'all can look them. at them. So definitely the Prince. Yeah. And if yeah. you have a picture of that, the Yeah, baby I'll send you ones too. of the, the, the baby quilt that, um, that I made for her and the Prince quilt. And I'll send a picture of the Halloween quilt. And I think I have some pictures maybe of the, my blocks for my Christmas quilt. Oh, awesome. So people can see that. And yeah. I have a bunch of, so of random stuff. I want to see that stuff. fabric. So I'll look for Sounds pictures adorable. that kind of support the things that we talked about. Perfect. So that way people can kind of get some visuals. That's great. All right, you guys. Um, I don't know what we're... Wait, what did we, t- we record earlier today? Feathers. Feathers. So next week we're talking about feathers. <laughs> we recorded backwards and my brain's all like, no, I don't know what we're talking about. Um, so definitely you're going to want to check out the blog for this episode. And we'll probably do a Pinterest board for it too. Just I'll try to, if you maybe have some websites that you like. Um, websites, resources. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. stick them up on there too. So um yeah, thank you for coming, Karina. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks it's awesome. for inviting me. It's She's the fun. super coolest quilter yeah. I've ever known. Yeah. So I've been calling you the quiltress. The quiltress. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So anyway, until next week, go make some cool shit, yo. Do it now. Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new task cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.